Hey guys, this is Laurel of the Dabbling Hook, Laurel of the Dabbling Hook, and I was using up a skein of really old yarn, it's festival yarn, it's from way back when, um, AC Moore Dollar Bin, I've had it for years, and before Big Twist Premium, this was my favorite yarn to use, because it's about the same weight, it's a worsted weight, but it's a heftier kind of wor worsted weight, anyway. So, I had one skein left that I found, and I decided to use it up. And it wasn't going to be enough for what I wanted to do, so halfway through, I decided to turn it into just a um, headband. So I figured I would do a little quick video on it. The stitch, I don't know if there's actually a name for it, but it's very reminiscent of um, the Alpine stitch. The difference is the Alpine stitch goes down two rows where this is just you do it all in the you know in the same row. So anyway I made this and then I had a little bit left over and I just did a flower so I may or may not include that in here but since this was the last skein of that I decided to use my trusty Big Twist Premium to do that so what you're going to do and I used a five and a half millimeter hook if this will show up I'm having focusing issues um, so I decided to use a five and a half millimeter hook for that so you are going to start with slip stitch on the hook or slip knot sorry on the hook and do a foundation single crochet um, of whatever amount you need for the size that you're making. So this one is about a three to six month uh, size. So I crocheted until I had about 15 inches um, for the circumference. So I'm sure you guys <clears throat> have seen many videos on how to do the foundation single crochet or any of the foundation stitches so you go under two loops and of course this isn't going to focus you go under the two loops yarn over and pull up a loop and now you're going to make the chain so you go through one loop and then you complete your single crochet as normal so if you are not comfortable with doing the foundation single crochet Z actually did a video with a modified way of doing that or her way of doing it and also if that doesn't work for you then you can just um, chain until you get to the 15 inches and then add one stitch and then single crochet um, to the end and join so I will meet you back when I have done enough chains with this previous yarn I ended up doing I think 46 single crochets we'll see how much um, this one is but go until you have 15 inches and I will meet you back okay so I've gotten to 15 inches and um, unstretched and what I did is I pulled out the last stitch that I had and I'm going to join the way I showed in a previous video where you don't have to sew up um, anything with the tail so I start my first one I go under the two loops pull up a loop and then I find the beginning I go through the base of the stitch yarn over pull through and then pull through the first loop that was on the hook and then finish a single crochet so now it's joined and you don't have to do any sewing up you just have to weave in that tail end and keep going okay so now you slip stitch to the first to join and what you're going to do is do a round of double crochets all around now for the first double crochet I use my um, alternate double crochet instead of chaining three 
or chaining one and putting a double crochet in the first one I don't chain I've just slip stitched I don't chain and I insert pull up a loop and do a single crochet and in the far leg you go under it pull up a loop and do another single crochet so that is my first double crochet and again I have a video tutorial on that um, that helps reduce the gap and if you're working a back and forth project project it keeps your edges really straight so this is what I like to use for my first double crochet so you just go ahead now and just do a double crochet all around and with this yarn um, it's a little thinner than this one here even though this was worse the weight um, so I ended up with 52 um, single crochets instead of the 46 that I started with the with the other one all right so I will meet you back at the beginning once I've um, done all this double crochets okay so I'm about to do my last double crochet and then you join to the top of your alternate double crochet you still should have a V at the top to make it easy to know where to join okay so this is where the pattern is going to um, to start so you chain one and then you make a front post double crochet around that alternate double crochet so around your first double crochet in the next stitch you do a double crochet in the next front post double crochet next double crochet next front post double crochet All right so you'll just keep doing front post double crochet regular double crochet front post regular double crochet and what I didn't mention before is that um, whatever um, measurement that you um, are making make sure your chains are even um, because you're going to need an even amount of chains for this pattern okay so if your um, 15 inches ends up being say 33 stitches just take one out um, this is crochet it'll stretch a little you want it to be you know slightly snugger so over time um, it doesn't stretch out of total out of shape so all right I would recommend um, going down a stitch rather than going up a stitch to get your even number just so it's a little snugger in the beginning all right so I will meet you at the end okay so I'm at the end and your last one should be a regular double crochet because you started with a front post double crochet so you slip stitch to the top of that first front post double crochet okay now for this one basically the pattern is you're going to be alternating where you start with a front post double crochet and next row you will start with a double crochet and then the following a front post and then a double so it's really it's a two row repeat but it's really the same set of stitches you're just alternating which one you start with with each row okay so here you do not chain one again and you just go in and then you do that alternate double crochet so you start with a single crochet and then on the far left leg you insert pull up a loop and complete a single crochet okay and now that counts as your double crochet so the next one will be a front post double crochet and that will go around um, the regular double crochet that you made in the round before and then in the double in the front post double crochet you will do a double crochet in the double crochet you do a front post double crochet front post around a double crochet double crochet in the front post front post around the regular double crochet and then you just keep going so like I said you're just alternating one row you start with a front post the next row you start with a double crochet so 
do that and keep doing that for however many um, rounds that you like or however wide that you want your headband air warmer to be. If you make it smaller, it's more of a headband. If you make it larger, it's more of um, an air warmer style headband. So keep going and I will meet you at the end and let you know how many that I did in mine. Okay. Okay, just so for the sake of this, I'm going to stop here. So including that first round of double crochet, I have one, two, Oops, two, three, four, five rounds. Um, I think it's the same as this as well. But again, um, I think this was labeled uh, a worsted, but it's really more of leaning more on the chunky side. So, um, you know, it feels, it feels different. It feels a little heftier. But I'm going to stop here and do the last front post double crochet and slip stitch to close. Now, to finish off, um, I finish off with a purl single crochet because what I find is that it very closely mimics, um, and again, I'm by the window, so you're going to hear traffic go by. Um, it very much mimics that, the look of the uh, foundation single crochet. I'll show you on this one. Hopefully it'll show up. So this is the foundation single crochet. And then this is the pearled or wrapped single crochet to finish. So I think they complement each other very well. So that is what I use to finish it off. So to do that, you've slip stitched. You're not going to chain. You're going to do, and again, I have in my playlist for tutorials, I have a a separate tutorial on the wrap single crochet um, with a little better lighting because this is wintertime lighting right here and it's a struggle. Okay, so to do the wrap real quickly, you bring the yarn forward and your hook is just going to go behind the yarn like this and then into the stitch with the yarn still in, in the front. Grab the yarn and pull it up and finish the single crochet. Let's see if I can get a little closer, if it'll focus. It's not cooperating. Okay, so instead of going the usual yarn over, kind of yarn under or yarn behind, go into the stitch with the yarn still in front, and then you grab the yarn and pull it up and finish your single crochet. So, so hook behind into a stitch, grab the yarn, finish single crochet. Behind, grab the yarn, finish. Yarn behind, insert, grab the yarn, pull up a loop, and finish. So as you can see, it gives you like the pearl bumps, which very much complements the starting one. So if that is um, not doable for you, then you can just do a um, regular single crochet to finish off or even um, an extended single crochet, which is you start your single crochet as normal, but instead of just yarning over and pulling through both, you pull through one and then you pull through both. It's just a little more decorative edge, but I would recommend just doing a regular single crochet if the, um, the pearl or wrap single crochet um, you're not comfortable with. Okay, so again, go from behind with the yarn in front of the hook, insert into the stitch, and then grab the yarn, and use your thumb to hold that yarn out of the way. Grab the yarn, pull it up, and then finish. All right, I will see you at the end. Okay, my last wrap, single crochet, and then you slip stitch to the first single crochet and you fasten off. I'm going to try to lighten up this video while I'm editing and hopefully that'll work. Now, the nature of this stitch, because 
you doing the front post, regular, front post, regular, double crochet, it does tend to want to curl on itself. But when you're wearing it, it's not a problem. And you can also, to help combat that, you can also add probably another row of single crochet if you prefer. But here it is. And that seam again, it's almost imperceptible. And I had used a 5.5 to do this originally. And now I'm thinking it's really more of a chunky weight. I would recommend going down probably to a five millimeter hook for regular worsted weight yarn. Unless you have tight tension, then the 5.5 will work. But you would just even your ends however you do that, and then you're good. And because the seam is really not that noticeable and you don't have that bottom one to sew in, you just have to weave in your ends, you're good to go. Now, the flower that I made, it's because this was just a 50 gram skein, a really small skein of yarn, so I wanted to use up all of it. So I just quickly whipped up a flower. So um, I will either add it onto this or um, do it in a separate video. So we'll see. When you're watching that, you'll see what I ended up doing. So, all right. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, just weave in, cut your tails, and you are good to go. Quick, simple, very textured, visual texture, which I adore, and also tactile texture. You can feel it. You can see it. Love it. All right, and simple. If you know how to do a double crochet front post, you're good to go. All right, and again, measure to your head size, um, unstretched. And if you find that you have loose tension, I would go down an inch. So if you are, say, a 22 head inch, I would do 21. Gives you room to um, uh, so it doesn't overly stretch. But the nature of this stitch anyway, it kind of brings it in a little because of the front post. So I think you'll be good to go. All right, and stay tuned for the flower. Bye. Okay, for the flower, I did use a 5.5 millimeter hook because I wanted the um, flower to be nice and firm and compact and not loose in any way. So, if this will focus, <laughs> um, you're going to start with a magic loop or however you do your center. I prefer the magic loop. Um, and lately I've been doing, I think it's called a double magic loop. Um, normally you would wrap around and go under the first one, grab the second one, pull up a loop and chain one and then start. But what I've been doing lately, actually I saw this a while back and for some reason my brain was not wrapping around it, but now it's clicked. So you wrap once, you wrap twice, you go under the two and grab the back one and then you do as you would normally do you chain one to secure and now what you have is a thicker center because you have multiple strands you have your starting tail and you also have the double wrap so you start off with six single crochets around all of that oops went in between one three four five and six okay now what you're going to do is pull the tail to see which one of the two is cinching as you go along and the one that's cinching you grab it and then you start pulling it tight okay and then you grab the tail and just pull it and this one does not come loose or not without a lot of pressure so you are pretty secure right here. So far I have not had anything come loose, so that one will take practice. I might do a separate video on that. I don't know yet, but we'll see. All right, so you join to your first single crochet, you slip stitch to join, chain one, 
and you increase in every stitch. So you're going to end up with 12 single crochet if I don't split Oops. the yarn. Okay, I will meet you at the end for 12 total. Okay, so then you join to the first with a slip stitch. Okay, it's kind of like doing amigurumi, but with a bigger hook. Okay, you chain one and you single crochet in that same stitch. Okay, then you chain one again and then you put in six double crochets in that same stitch. It's going to be a little tight, but it works out. Hold on. What do I have? Two, four, five, six. Okay. Then you chain one and you single crochet in that same stitch. A little snug, but it'll work. And don't be afraid to like squish it over if you need to. Okay. Now, because you put so many in that one stitch, the next one is a little hidden, but make sure you don't miss it. Your count will be off if you don't, but if you do, okay. What you're going to do is slip stitch in that next stitch, and then in the next stitch, so that would be the third one, you do a single crochet, you chain one, and you do the whole thing over. Six double crochets. Now this is completely customizable. If you find the six double crochet is just too much, do five, do four. So I'm at four, oops, five, six. And I do want this dense, so that's why I'm doing that many. You chain one, single crochet in that same stitch, okay? Give it a tug to move it over so you don't miss the next stitch. Slip stitch in the next stitch, and then you start over again single crochet in the next, chain one, and six double crochets in that same stitch. Okay, so keep doing that. Um, six double crochets in this one, chain one, single crochet in the same one. Squish it over so you don't miss the next stitch, slip stitch in the next stitch, and then start over again with the next one by doing a single crochet, chain one, six double crochets, chain one, single crochet, all in the same stitch. Slip stitch in the next, and then start over again in the next one. All right, I will meet you at the end. Okay, so I've done my last of the five, of the six double crochets, chain one, single crochet, and then in the last stitch, you slip stitch, okay? And here you'd normally fasten off, but what I'm gonna do to finish off is pull the loop up Take out the hook, go from back to front into that very first single crochet and put your hook into that. You're going to hear probably a little life noises in the background. And then put the hook, put the loop back on the hook and pull it through gently and then fasten off. Do one chain and fasten off. Okay, and if I can find my scissors wherever I put it. I don't know. <laughs> you just cut off and you either weave in your ends if you want to sew it on something different or leave a tail so you can, um, if you find, now I said that the join is not very visible, not very noticeable unless you're really, we would notice, but you know, nobody else really would pay attention to that. You can't even see it on the back, but you can take the um, flower and sew it with the tail right here so you've got same color on same color you can make a different color and sew it on okay you can also do the um scrunching up or the cinching up of however you do it here and you can tie on and do it that way or you can still cinch it up and still put the flower there you can put a button here and if you had left a circle in the middle which I didn't then you can you know have the button removable but that's not a preference of mine so you have options but wearing it plain I think you know it's a perfect air warmer looks great 
Okay. So I hope this is helpful as usual. Oh, here's the scissors. <laughs> so I'm going to leave a tail to potentially sew this on. Leave in your ends and it, like this center, I'm tugging on it and it is going really nowhere. So that double um, magic loop has been very helpful. All right. I hope you find this helpful, like I said, and I will talk to you later. Bye.